I'm Salvador Navarro. I'm a professor at the University of Western Ontario, I'm affiliated with HCO and with the Institute for Research on Poverty in Wisconsin. I um, work on what can broadly be called applied econometrics, which uh, mostly means I find a topic uh, where people are working on um, with data and I insert myself in there either working with the data or analyzing the econometrics of what people are doing to see uh, the implications of the assumptions that they're invoking when they do this. Mm -hmm. So I guess right, right now I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on migration, crime and productivity, I would say, for the most part. Um, in migration, I'm working with Jin Sao on uh, migration in China. Uh, mostly thinking about the, the somewhat unforeseen consequences that migration may have for uh, human capital accumulation, um, which are it's a topic that mo people have overlooked somewhat. Um, so the idea being that um, if the re if the return to your human so if you're a migrant and when you migrate. Uh, um, at the origin place, the return to your human capital is not very high for whatever reason, then um, you have less incentive to accumulate human capital ex ante, whether you migrate or not. I mean, just uh, the compar compared to a world in which there's no migration, if, if all of a sudden there's migration, but the return to your human capital when you migrate is not that high, then so you end up with people accumulating less human capital. And so we we show that that's been the case for China. Um, but I, I, I think that's probably true for, for many places where low-skilled migration is a, is a big issue. Um, I mean, I'm also working on crime. Um, and there's, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's quite a big topic. Um, there's a lot of work to be done on crime in, in many, many, many aspects. Uh, but I think that some of the aspects that have been uh, less studied on crime is both uh, this notion that there's more than one possible choice that people can make. So mainly there's, 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 a, there's a lot of literature thinking about of, oh, what happens if we do this intervention? Do I reduce crime or a particular kind of crime? But there's, there's a lot less about like what happens to these people. So, so just to give you an, an example that's just made up, so if you think of, say, the death penalty, and you say the death penalty reduces murder, and you say, oh, that's great, right, or not, whatever. Um, the question is, well, what happens to these people? They don't necessarily become saints after that, right? I mean, there's, there's, and so we know very little, for example, about what are the substitution patterns between crimes? What is it that people switch to when you increase the cost of committing crime A? Because a lot of the focus has been on like particular interventions on particular crimes, without focusing on what's happening to uh, uh, afterwards. What what are these go guys doing? Um, I mean, one thing that I think is 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 interesting. I've done some work on that with Stephen, which is kind of intersecting stats and intersecting decision theory. Is this notion of of acknowledging. So we tend to make very stark predictions uh, with, with our models or with our uh, statistical methods. Um, but the truth is we have very little uh, ex-ante knowledge of, of what would be the best way of thinking about a problem. And so one thing that, that we've been trying to do, I mean, uh, Stephen and me and David and other people, um, is to acknowledge this, what we call model uncertainty, this notion that uh, amongst the many models that one could think of, maybe we have some reasons to prefer some models than others, but we don't really have a reason to say this is the right model. And so we've been trying to provide some way of thinking about, okay, so here's, here's the predictions that many models make. Um, is there anything we can learn from them on the aggregate, right? Um, so we did, we did a study of GONs, for example, and, and the idea was to see whether certain types of assumptions led to certain conclusions and other types of assumptions led to other conclusions, um, which would be pretty informative, or what ended up happening, which is that really 
there doesn't seem to be any pattern, really. Like minor changes to your model would lead to completely different uh, um, conclusions. And so if you acknowledge that, then it's hard to come up with a hard conclusion of whether guns are good or bad, whatever your view is on the topic. Um, and so it's this notion of acknowledging that there's not only uncertainty in the usual way that we think about that, oh, I only have a sample and I'm going to get noisy estimates of what I want, but the notion that as, as scientists we know a lot less than we think we do, and so um, we, should, we should acknowledge how, how ignorant we are on, on that respect too, and, and include that, that uncertainty when we make our whatever conclusions or recommendations we do.